Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at why your low poly objects might look dull and lifeless. And we're going to discuss three tips to improve your low poly art. Tip three in particular is a practical exercise where you can go in and make tiny adjustments and really add some character to your objects. This video will be part of a game assets series. So check out the description for links to the playlist and other playlists. Also, if you like what I do, I've got a character course, an art Kickstarter, and there's loads of other free courses in playlist in the description and on my website. So tip number one is references. Now this might seem really obvious to many of you, but so many students that I've taught just dive straight into Blender and try and make their low poly objects. And although you might have a great idea for your object, it really helps to push your ideas that bit further by looking at some references. So my example is a sword. A great site for gathering references would be Pinterest. I'll put a link in the description for different sites where you can gather references. But Pinterest is one of my favorites. It seems to have a really great algorithm, which just makes it really good. So if I put in game art and sword, you can see all these lovely swords that are coming up here and giving me lots of different ideas. And you can organize these into boards, which will help you massively. Now when referencing, I've obviously typed in game art and sword, so I'm getting all these artistic style swords. But when you're looking at references, even if you're looking at low poly stuff, don't always look at what other artists have done and their stylized work. Look at actual swords as well. I know that seems obvious, but if you're making an object and you're trying to stylize it in some way, don't go straight for the stylized art. Look at the actual objects and see what they look like first, then move on to other artists and the way they've stylized it. So search for low poly and your object and search for your actual object. And of course, there's obvious sites like Google Image Search. And this time I've actually typed in stylized and I'm coming up with a range of different sorts. So tip number one, using reference images, but not just from other artists, also from real life. Tip number two is silhouette. Now here I'm in Critter, a free art program to help explain this. And I've talked about making thumbnails in a previous video and how important that is. Well, I've done a similar thing here where I've sketched out several thumbnails. Don't worry if you're not artistic, there's nothing particularly complicated about these. If you are struggling though, creatively and with your art skills, then do look into my Kickstarter. It's for complete beginners learning to draw using game art. But you can see I've used a very simplistic approach, the starting point is very flat just to get the outline. And you can see how my shapes develop, too much of a curve there, less of a curve, I preferred that style. Then I thought about creating a straight sword like this, then added a bit of character, then just went completely insane. And that's an important step to creating your thumbnails and your silhouettes. Again, I'll talk about what silhouette is in a second. But you can see the slow development. I changed the shape and that was kind of influenced by these sort of more crazy, odd looking shapes of sword. But this was a bit too far and I wanted something in between the two. So I went with an unusual shape like this, which I started to like, but it didn't quite balance well. So I changed it around, kept adapting it and then ended up with this sort of shape down here, which I started to be more pleased with. Then I thought about the actual hilt and then changing the different styles across the bottom here. And I ended up with this one being the one I liked. And you can see I sort of made that bigger over here and just smartened it up a little bit, ready for bringing into the background into Blender. Now I talk about silhouette and that's the outline of your object. If I just quickly show you this layer here, if you are to fill in all your object in black, that's what's known as a silhouette. It's what happens when someone has a really strong light behind them. And it just highlights the outline of your shape. And if your silhouettes look good, your objects are probably going to look good as well. And it's really, really important for low poly work. Often the low poly style has basic colors, so we don't have that sort of help from textures. And also the low poly style doesn't have that fine detail. So your silhouette, the outline of your shape is all important. So I encourage you to sort of fill your final shape in and make sure you're happy with that. You could even draw these thumbnails out as silhouettes if you're wanting to really focus on it. So that's tip number two, make sure your silhouette looks interesting and you can do that by creatively building up using lots of thumbnails of all your ideas. Okay, so that brings us on to tip number three. So for that, I'm gonna take us into Blender. I'm not gonna show you the building of this sword. If you're interested, then comment below and I'll share a video with the background image and I'll make the model available as well. Now at first glance, this sword looks quite nice. I'm quite happy with it, but I feel like we can add a bit more character to it. So if I go into edit mode with tab and let's take one of these lines just here. It's mirrored across the Y axis. The Y axis is in green and I want to create a little notch in here to add that element of character. So I'll zoom in just a touch and if I press control B on this, I can bevel it, which creates this look of a notch here. 
and I can use my wheel to add another cut just like that. Then I'll left click to set that and I can grab this edge and pull it inwards. Before I do that though, make sure you've got this auto merge vertices highlighted in blue. Now I can go to vertex mode and grab this vertex here and GG to edge slide and pull it into the other one. Then I can grab this one and I can press G and just pull that in. And you can see suddenly it's got that bit more character with a notch in there. And the bevel is the easy way to do that, especially with low poly shapes. Let's go back into edit mode and try another one down the bottom here. So again, into edge mode, select that edge. Now I'll use a different technique on this. It's a slower technique, but in case you can't use the bevel tool for any reason, you can use the knife tool, press K for knife tool, and I can cut a notch around here like this. So it's exactly the same as if I beveled it. Then one to go to vertex mode, select that vertex, GG to edge slide and bring it in. So there, my sword suddenly has a lot more character. It's got more of a story behind it about how it got those notches. It's been in lots of battles and so forth. Now I can go further with this and create little lips on the inside to make this look like it's got leather wrapped around it and so on, but I'll leave that for the sword tutorial. Let me know if you want to see that. So those are the three tips, starting off with reference, make sure you look at real references as well as stylized art and low poly art. Then sketch out your ideas with thumbnails and concentrate on the silhouette. The silhouette is all important to make sure your objects have that real interest and character. And then number three is those fine character elements. So small notches to give it some sort of story. Okay, so I hope this helps you. Thanks for watching. Do remember the Kickstarter and the other links in the description and I'll see you next time.